Dr. Greg Castello, board certified family practice. Today we're going to talk about probiotics, or in Latin, pro for promote, and bios meaning life, so organisms that promote life or promote health. The modern era of probiotics dates back about 100 years to a Russian scientist named Eli Miknikov, who noticed that Russian and Bulgarian farmers who had a diet high in yogurt that was cultured with lactobacillus bacteria lived sometimes to be 100 years of age, and he hypothesized that having this good bacteria in your gut displaced the bad bacteria that caused toxins which were responsible for the aging process. This trend became quite popular all over Europe until it was determined that this bacteria actually did not survive the stomach acid and never ended up living in your gut, so this treatment fell from grace. The oldest probably evidence of medical use of lactobacillus happened during World War I in 1917 in Germany when there was a Shigella bacteria outbreak that happened that was untreatable because there was no antibiotics at that point. A scientist noticed that there was a soldier who seemed to be immune to the Shigella infection and cultured his E. coli bacteria, and they actually gave that bacteria to people as a treatment of Shigella bacteria infections with some success. Currently, we use probiotics generally not for medical purposes, but for wellness, and it's a large over-the-counter supplement uh, industry. Uh, probiotics have been touted for all kinds of not only stomach conditions like ulcers and colitis and diarrhea and constipation, but for skin conditions, for general wellness, um, anti-aging, immune system, and inflammation, as well as other things. Um, the problem is, is that there's been multiple studies on multiple different bacteria as probiotics, and none are actually conclusive that they have any beneficial effect. What happens with probiotics or how we find a probiotic, honestly, is that a scientist roots around in somebody's stool looking for a bacteria that nobody else has identified before. They grow or culture the bacteria and then give it to people. They determine that it's not a harmful bacteria like Salmonella or Shigella and then determine if it has any potential beneficial uses and then they market it as a probiotic. Uh, Bifidus regularis would be a good example. That's a bacteria that's used in yogurt uh, that is touted as treatment for constipation. So someone identified this bacteria, they got to name it, and they called it Bifidus regularis. It's in the Bifidus family of bacteria, and regularis is what they called it to remind you what you're using it for, and it's in yogurt now as a treatment for uh, constipation. Probably the best family of bacteria that are likely to be beneficial would be the lactobacillus family. Lactobacillus acidophilus is used to digest milk, so if you have lactose intolerance, if you can get this bacteria into your gut, then that bacteria will help you digest milk and help your lactose intolerance. A uh, trend has been, and with some success, and it's disgusting, is to do what's called a, a stool transplant. And what that is is that you take somebody's healthy stool and transplant via enema into a sick person with the intention of putting their good bacteria into the sick person's colon. Um, it does have some success because the stomach is not involved. You don't have to ingest it. It does not get digested. And if you can put good bacteria in somebody's gut, then that may grow and may be beneficial. Um, it has been shown effective as a treatment for a bacterial infection called C. diff infection. Um, it is helpful, and I'm not sure where you would go to get this, but if you are interested, you can look up stool transplant on the Internet, and there's quite a bit about that. Uh, what I would recommend if you're going to take a probiotic is have a specific intention in mind, uh, say acne. And if you took a probiotic and your acne got better, wonderful, that probiotic may help you. But I would not take a probiotic on blind face because somebody says that it's going to be good for you or make you healthy. Uh, an interesting point is people eat yogurt because of probiotics, and all commercially available yogurt has been pasteurized. So bacteria is used to make yogurt. It cultures it and turns it into yogurt, and there is bacteria in yogurt. But then it goes through a pasteurization process, same as milk, which kills bad bacteria, but it also kills any healthy bacteria. So if you have a yogurt, it literally has to have bacteria put back in it. So they culture it, they make yogurt, they pasteurize it. Uh, it's sterile, no bacteria at all good or bad and then the manufacturer will put good bacteria back into it. So if you like yogurt, wonderful. Uh, you can have a yogurt that says contains active cultures or active flora. If you're not a yogurt fan, you can get a probiotic in a capsule and do the same thing without it. 
please make sure that you're not taking it on somebody else's recommendation. If you feel better with a probiotic, you can take it. If you don't notice any appreciable differences, either don't take the probiotic or try a different probiotic. Thanks for listening. Dr. Greg Castello, Board Certified Family Practice. Thanks.